Welcome back, everybody. Seahawks fans always count on a bit of football wizardry from head coach Pete Carroll and GM John Schneider at the NFL draft each year. So just how well did they do with their 11 draft picks? That's what they ended up with this year. For the answer, we turn to former Seahawk and WSU wide receiver Michael Bumpus from Root Sports Northwest and former Seahawk and Skyline School quarterback Jake Heaps from Russell Wilson Quarterback Academy because you guys keep busy try. with all of this. <laughs> so what happened? They... I always tune in for their first pick, and then they always trade down, and I'm like, right. ah, why am I so stupid? Why did I sit here and watch this? How did they turn what they had into so many more picks? Uh, really, they had two first-round picks, I believe the 21st and the 29th pick, so there's some value there. And like right. most Seahawks fans, we were hoping that they use those two picks, but with only four picks going in, they wanted more quantity, so they get rid of that second, or excuse me, that 21st pick, and uh, move down to pick up some more guys. Am I wrong as a fan to think, but maybe there was somebody amazing at 21, or is it just better that they they get more people? There was definitely someone amazing at 21, but with only four picks, you want to bring as many guys into camp as possible yeah. just to compete, you know, and that's what Pete Carroll thrives on, on competition. So when you have a limited amount of picks and you want more guys, you trade down, get some guys in, and have them go at it during camp. And, Margaret, something to add to that is the Seahawks have a different way of evaluating their players. They're looking for Seahawk players. Their Seahawk way. Our kind of guy. People, exactly. They say. And, and so when you walk into it, like with Bumpus said, with four picks, <laughs> Is John he Snyder. He's not Michael. He's still Bumpus. <laughs> yeah, he, he's Bumpus to me. <laughs> and, 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 and uh, you know, with, with, with that, John Snyder is a volume shooter. He wants to have as many picks as possible. And, uh, and it all started with the Frank Clark trade. They were able to acquire yeah. a, an additional first round pick and then get a second round pick the next year and then swap their third. So that was the start of it all to get the whole ball rolling. But what they were able to find in LJ Collier is a really good player who is very versatile at, at, at 6'4", 280 pounds, uh, can play on the outside at defensive end, and can also come in at defensive tackle and be a really nice pass rusher. So, Which is important. Like, yes. Yeah, so so who, what kind, is he an edge rusher kind of guy? He is an edge rusher, but it's not, it's not the same player as Frank Clark. I think a lot of people were looking for the sleek, sexy uh, pass rusher on the I'm edge. I'm always looking like, for that. That's right, no, that, Frank, that Frank Clark was. And what they ended up getting is a guy who's more versatile, a guy who his player comp would be Michael Bennett. And that's something that the Seahawks were really excited about to sure. get a player that can be on the outside and can play on the inside, giving them a lot of versatility. That makes sense. All right, let's talk about Marquise Blair. Tell me about him. Marquise Blair, I love this. Can honestly, when they drafted him, I had to do a little bit of research because mm -hmm. he wasn't on my board. But at 6'1", 185 pounds, he's one of the most versatile guys out there. He can play strong safety and he can play free safety. So he can come down that box, make some tackles, and cover over the top. And what I do like about that, again, is competition. Mm -hmm. we got a lot of guys in the secondary right now. Yep. No one is safe, and that generally brings out the best in players. So Blair, I'm looking forward to seeing him make a lot of plays during camp. Good. Might he be an Earl Thomas kind of guy? Uh, I, I, you got to be careful I mean, yeah, when you compare not, guys to Earl Thomas. He's not going to be Earl Thomas, but would he play that same well, when, position, when he is at free safety, he will try to mimic Earl Thomas, but Earl didn't play too much in the box as much. So I when he's in the box, he's more of a, a McDougal. McDougal is a guy who can come down Love in the box too. and go over the top. At that safety position, the more you can do, the better. And you're a general out there. You're making sure your corners are in the right, right. spot. And you're the last line of defense. Anyone gets by you, that's a, that's that, a bad look. That's very bad. You <laughs> like this pick? I love this pick. Uh, I, I think that... Marquise Blair, the one thing that he can do is he can hit, and he wants to hit with violence, and uh, that's really hard Your to find. Your eyes just lit up. And I, I do, because <laughs> this, this is a thing with the Seahawks in the secondary last year is, uh, one, communication wasn't great, and mm. two, they had Bradley McDougal, but outside of that, they didn't have a player that was feared once Earl Thomas was down, and now they're able to add a player who can play down in the box at strong safety. He can play back and f as free safety, so very versatile between him and Bradley McDougald, and you're l having a guy who has a presence on the field that when the other team's out there and you've you're in a division with that's focused on offense, Rams, yeah. 49ers, Arizona, you want to have a defensive presence and a player out there like Marquise Blair that's, that's ready to make a statement. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, DK Metcalf, wide receiver from Ole Miss. Honestly, I was surprised he was still there. Um, I, he came oh, in with good. all this hype. That means we got hype. kind of a steal, maybe. Yeah, we did. He comes in running a 4-3. If you followed him at all, he's walking around with his shirt off. That's pretty fast. He's the most ripped guy out there. He's yeah. a big, deep threat guy, and that's what we've been missing. We have uh, Baldwin. Who knows if he's coming back? We have a locket. David Moore shined a Can little bit. Can we just bit. stop right there for a minute? <laughs> oh, I I'm mean, right there with you. That Margaret. hurt my heart. Um, 
But first of all, I want Doug Baldwin to do what's best for him, for yeah. his body, for his family, and I think he's going to do amazing things in his post-football life. But how serious do we think this is that he may have played his last down here? I think it's pretty serious. During this offseason, he had three surgeries, and whenever wow. you hit that 30 mark and you get more surgeries, the body starts to break down. Father time always wins, especially yeah. in the game of football and at the position Doug Baldwin plays. He's a violent type of receiver. He's so quick. He plays hard, and because of that, he has a little bit more injuries, so I'm with you, man. I hope that he comes back, but at the end of the day, he has to make the right decision for right. his family. You've got you've got a long life ahead of you at 30. So um, Metcalf is he's the one they described as having a Batman suit for a body. Yes. That he, <laughs> I was yes. like, what is up with that? Okay, some local players. Uh, let's talk about Caleb McGarry, who has been here and is enormous. Yes. And he uh, he got taken in the first round, right? Yeah, local product. Great story. Uh, he played at uh, Fife. Uh, and, and at one point their house burned down and they were homeless for a period of time. And so they've been through a lot in their life and Caleb McGarry through it all has worked his tail off, has, has really become uh, a first round talent and was able to get picked up late in the first round and the excitement that they had was incredible. And he's got a tremendous opportunity at Atlanta. I know he's gonna be able to plug in right away at right tackle and hopefully he'll have a long successful career. Yeah. Um, but he's been through a lot of great success story, a kid that works, has worked his tail off and so I'm I'm rooting for him. He was a great young man. I enjoyed meeting him. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the husky? Sorry, the husky. How did the huskies do? <laughs> the huskies came <laughs> out of this <laughs> extremely well. And 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 Michael, being the WSU guy, <laughs> you know, might not want to hear this, but they That's they enough. walked out of it with eight eight draft picks, and uh, they were uh, third in terms of uh, college football and, and draft picks going into the draft behind Ohio Alabama State, and Alabama. Ohio State. Yeah. yeah, and so what Chris, Chris Peterson has been able to do is, is have a program that develops. And time in and time again, you know, year in and year out, they've been able to develop and be able to uh, get guys into the NFL. And so this is a very talented crop of guys and guys that uh, out of those eight picks, I think eight of them are really going to find their find a great role in the NFL and be impact players. I'm psyched. Just quickly, your your letter grade for this draft for the Hawks. For the Hawks, I would give them a B plus. Right okay. now, a B plus. I think they have the potential to reach the A. You know, it's all about development with mm -hmm. the Seahawks, and that's what they do. That's why they bring in all these guys and they get them for cheap. You know, that's what helps the, the salary. Amazing. And especially when you pay Russell Wilson the money that he got, which he deserves. Yes. Um, you got to be able to back it up with some talent that's cheaper, and that's what they did. Right now, I give them a B plus with the potential for an A. They might be rising. Yeah. What do you think? So I would I would give them a B minus in, in their grade. Uh, they were able to get really good football players, and that's something that you love to have. And one of the big things that they mentioned was special teams. And sometimes when you when you draft a, or when you trade up to get a, a third rounder and Cody Barton from Utah, great player who's very versatile, can play across the board. He, their specific reason for drafting him was for special teams. Ben Burkirvan, same thing. And so it's not that, it's Tim. not maybe the sexy thing that everybody wants them to do. I would have loved to have seen them go, go after another pass rusher, but they're going to do that in, in free agency here coming up soon. So I think that they have a chance, like Michael said, that they have a chance to develop into really good players. But as of right now, there's still, there's still some development going on here. So I would give them a B-. I look forward to the season. Thank you all. Hope you guys will come back and talk football with us. Thank more. you.